Hey guys, xin chào các bạn. Buenos and eagles. In today's video, I'm going to cover the book Influence, The Psychology of Persuasion by Robert Sadini. Uh, I'm going to share my top five favorite takeaways from the book. So starting with the first one, give people a reason for doing something. When we ask someone anything, we will be more successful if we provide them a reason. People simply like to have reasons for things they do. The what is not so much important as to the why behind your request. So even if the reason is simple, trivial, or completely obvious, uh, for example, something like, can you replace the paper in the printer because this will allow it to print the next job? This will increase the chance of success of that person uh, performing the task versus if you didn't give them a reason. The second takeaway is be likable. People are more accepting of your ideas if you are likable. Uh, ways you can improve your likability are physical attractiveness. Uh, for this one, most of it will be genes. However, things that you can, con things that are in your control are physical fitness, grooming, how you dress, posture, uh, and then never complaining or criticizing, having a positive attitude. Uh, by having a positive attitude, people will just enjoy being around you more enjoying your, you know, more welcoming of your presence. Uh, humor, if you can make someone laugh, it's hard for them uh, to dislike you. Uh, agreeing and sharing the same point of view, uh, acknowledging and praising someone for their efforts and merits. Uh, showing, showing interest and care, providing encouragement. Uh, showing uh, or making the other person feel important and appreciated. Uh, connecting on similarities, people tend to like those who are most like themselves. Um, cooperation towards a mutual goal or benefit, sharing the same struggle or being able to empathize with the struggle, uh, admitting a vulnerability to show humanness, and then uh, exposure under good conditions. So for example, uh, you're someone who brings pleasant or good news uh, on a frequent or on an uh, often basis, and adding value or improving the other person's life in some form or way. The third takeaway is the contrast principle. Contrast greatly affects the way we see the difference between two things that are presented before us. Uh, we can use this principle to help us sell or convey our work or ideas. Um, an ex a simple example from the book is, for example, a real estate salesman would begin and show a buyer one or two rundown houses with inflated prices. He would then arrive to the mediocre or average home he intends to sell. Uh, the mediocre house to the buyer would look amazing because it benefits from the comparison of the two previous uh, rundown houses. So at this point, the buyer's eyes would light up because this one looks great compared to the two that, that look like dumps. Um, so in any other circumstances, that mediocre house to the buyer would have just been mediocre. However, uh, in this scenario, uh, the contrast principle uh, played an effect on that buyer. So comparison, plays a powerful effect in persuasion. The fourth takeaway is the scarcity principle. Opportunities seem more valuable to us when their availability is limited. These include limited number and deadline tactics where there's only X amount left or this opportunity expires uh, by this date to encourage you to act now. Potential loss also plays a huge part in decision making. Uh, we seem to be more motivated by the thought of losing something than by the thought of gaining something of equal value. So for example, a strategy of this is uh, if you don't take up on this opportunity now, then you may miss out on the potential benefit that is not available uh, to you later. The fifth takeaway is the reciprocation principle. So in the book, Robert explains that people tend to try to repay in kind what another person has provided us uh, because there is a general distaste for those who take and make no effort to give in return. We will often go to great lengths to avoid being considered one of these types of people. Uh, most of us find it highly disagreeable to be in this state of obligation. Uh, it weighs heavily on us and demands uh, for it to be removed. For this reason alone, uh, we may be willing to agree to perform a larger favor uh, than we receive merely to relieve ourselves of that psychological burden of debt. So in combination, uh, the reality of internal discomfort and the possibility of external shame can provide, uh, can produce this psychological motivation for us to reciprocate. Overall, it's a good philosophy for life to provide initial acts of kindness to others without expecting anything in return. You guys can let me know your favorite takeaways from the book in the comments below. Thank you again for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video.